So yeah, thanks a lot for bringing me on stage. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Alexei. I'm one of the co-founders of Interlay. And today I'm going to use the opportunity to talk about how we're bringing Bitcoin to the Polkadot DeFi ecosystem, essentially bringing a lot of this new liquidity um, to help us bootstrap both Kusama and um, I want to briefly talk about the vision of Interlay and interoperability. Um, today, when you use DeFi across chains, you really have to know what's going on. Even with XCM, we still have to know which parachain or across multiple ecosystems, which, which chain we're connected in, which wallet we're using. And this is still very far away from what we see in, in modern financial systems. And really to get to mainstream, what we want to achieve, and that's essentially Interlay's vision, is to make it as simple as using a cash machine. When you go to an ATM, you withdraw cash, you don't care how the banks settle in the background. And this is exactly the future to which we're heading in crypto. On that quite ambitious path, our first goal and our first mission is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is essentially what started this entire movement. It's a trillion dollar market. It's dominated by centralized exchanges, which is quite controversial. Bitcoin started this entire decentralized movement, but to use it for anything else than payments, you have to go through a centralized provider. And of course, that, that just, that's just wrong. So what we are trying to do is we're trying to enable everyone to invest, earn and pay with BTC on any blockchain trustlessly and directly from your wallet. And Bitcoin is not just here because of the largest asset by market cap. It also has political power. Bitcoin is the asset that is known outside of crypto. It's the asset that institutions and even now legislations are starting to adopt. So essentially tapping into this market is what we feel will bring a lot of liquidity and adoption and new users into the whole code ecosystem. So let's take a look at how we actually achieve this. InterBDC is Intelis flagship product. On Kinsugi, on our par Kusama parachain, it's called KBTC. IntuBTC is a one-to-one -one BTC backed asset. For those of you who are familiar with this concept, it's similar to how WBTC works, but in a truly decentralized manner. If we take a centralized solution like WBTC, we have BitGo, who is the centralized and trusted custodian. When you use them, you have to give BitGo your Bitcoin and they will mint you WBTC on Ethereum. And you have to trust them that they will not steal or lose your Bitcoin and that they will actually allow you to get it back. And you have to go through KYC. And it's not really tailored to end users. It's more of an institutional play, which is fair enough if you want to get quick exposure to the price. But if you're a long-term DeFi holder, a protocol that allows BDC as collateral, you really don't want to rely on a centralized custodian because the chain is only as strong as the weakest link. So what we did with InterBDC is we said, Anyone can become this custodian. Anyone can receive Bitcoin into custody. Now, of course, this, the, you, the first question that probably pops into your minds, well, what if we suddenly need to trust anyone on the internet with our Bitcoin? That's probably even worse. And it would be if we would not have this multi-collateral and cross-chain proof system built into Interlay. What our vaults are required to do, and our vaults are these custodians, they lock up collateral in a multi-collateral system. So when a vault joins the network, they lock up different assets in the Interlay network. And these assets serve as insurance against their misbehavior. So when you as a user come to the Interlay parachain, you want to mint into BTC, you select one or multiple vaults, you deposit BTC, and this locks up their collateral. And in return, you receive InterBTC or short IBTC. And while this BTC is locked physically in the Bitcoin chain, you can use Inter or IBTC on any DeFi application. Freely, you can move it wherever you want to and use it however you want. When you want to go back, you have two potential outcomes. The good outcome, for which we all, of course, hope, is that you return the InterBTC to the system the system instructs the vaults to return Bitcoin to you. Vaults do that. Everyone behaves correctly. You get your Bitcoin back. The vault gets its collateral back. However, should something go wrong and things we know sometimes do go wrong, if the vault does not return the BDC to the user, the user is reimbursed. So you as an inter-BDC holder have the guarantee that you will get your collateral back or you'll get the Bitcoin back. 
So in summary, what does this mean? IntuBDC is secure because it's radically open. Anyone can become a vault. It's censorship resistant by design and it's governed by the centralized system from day one. No single entity in Interly or Kintsugi has enough voting power to change the course of the, of the system by itself. We need the majority of people to vote. And we've really paid attention to making sure that no single person or entity, either us or investors or any third party actually can have a majority. And then the most interesting property is the secured by insurance. As mentioned, if the vault does not return the Bitcoin to you, you will be reimbursed in collateral. So that's essentially the best possible guarantee that you have on the market today. And think about it. We insure our phones, our cars, our dollars are insured in the bank. But so far, if you put your BTC in an exchange, you have zero remedy, no guarantees whatsoever. And essentially, this is exactly what we change. We, we move to an ecosystem where just like in DeFi, we work with over collateralization and make sure that you don't have to trust anyone. And of course, a side note, this has been audited by now four times. It's based on top tier peer reviewed research that we published back in 2018. We've gone through multiple conferences on Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polkadot. Um, this has been reviewed and assessed by the community. And in fact, Polkadot has selected this protocol as its recommended way to bridge Bitcoin into this ecosystem. Now, Interlay is a Polkadot parachain. Why are we parachain? You've been listening to this conference, you're here, so you probably know why Polkadot and, and which advantages it brings. For us, it's the scalability, it's the robustness of the Rust programming language, and it's this flexibility to customize our parachain to whatever use case we need. In our case, we are able to use Bitcoin libraries. So instead of re-implementing cryptography libraries, which is generally very risky, we're able to use what Bitcoin Core, the Bitcoin Core software uses, which makes our system even more robust. We have a dual network, which means we have a canary network, Kintsugi, and a mainnet on Polkadot Interlay. Kintsugi is already live, and I'll come to that in a second. Interlay is in progress already of launching the core systems. It's a Polkadot parachain, and we expect to have IntuBDC on Polkadot very soon. But Polkadot is just a start. There are hundreds and thousands of Bitcoin DeFi users that still rely on WBDC. Even now on Moonbeam Moon River, we have WBDC um, where, and that is used to get exposure to that, to essentially the Bitcoin price. And our goal is not only to bring Bitcoin to Polkadot, but to all other ecosystems. Because in the end, this is the way that we feel that we can enable more users outside of the current crypto community who first probably will enter through Bitcoin, how we can bring them into DeFi and basically help them access um, and decentralize their personal finance. So in summary, for you as a user, the unique value proposition of InterBDC is essentially hodl or hold and earn. And why is that the case? We, it's the case because we built an algorithmic stablecoin. InterBDC is essentially what DAI is to the dollar, but we are this to Bitcoin. It's an algorithmic stablecoin pegged and physically redeemable for BDC. And this allows you to hold Bitcoin in a decentralized custody network with full insurance. So if you're not sure how to handle a hardware wallet and you don't want to use a centralized exchange and you don't want to pay thousands of dollars to professional custodian, you just mint into BDC and you know that your Bitcoin is insured. You don't even have, have to do anything with into BDC. You can just say, I'm just going to hold it that way. And it's a custody solution. You only have to manage one wallet for the meantime. You only have to worry about one set of keys and you know that if the counterparty loses your Bitcoin, you'll be reimbursed. And on the other hand, once you're in the system, you can now easily earn on this BDC. You can pay merchants, you can trade in AMMs, you can lend, borrow, and invest into DeFi protocols within one or two clicks. And what is not on this slide, Interlay is becoming the main onboarding mechanism into Kusama DeFi with Kintsugi at the moment that does not require an exchange. From experience, we know that it's sometimes hard to source specific DeFi assets to pay for fees and to onboard in a specific ecosystem. And you typically have to find and go through different exchanges to be able to get this. With Interlay, with KBTC on Kintsugi or IntuBTC on Interlay, you can just get Bitcoin, which you can find on every single crypto exchange, mint, and then trade it against any DeFi app you want. 
And this allows you to onboard very easily into these ecosystems and to avoid searching and trying to go through different crypto exchanges, which not of which not all are reliable, especially in newer ecosystems and with newer assets that are potentially not listed on the trustworthy exchanges. Now, in consideration of time, I'll skip over the slide. Um, this deck is available. You can find all the information at docs.intelli.io. But what I like to do here is, is provide the USD stablecoin analogy when comparing us to other BTC assets. WBTC and RAMBTC are the equivalents of USDC and USDT. They're centralized. No matter what they say, they're centralized and you have to trust them. And it may be fine because Bitcoin is a reputable company, but it's not in the spirit of DeFi. TBTC actually tried to build a decentralized system. Unfortunately, they had ran into some issues with early liquidations, only using ETH as collateral, the very, very high costs on Ethereum, and some other design issues that arise from them pivoting and trying to use their privacy part um, with the bridge. Intubitc is the equivalent of multi-collateral DAI. And the argument is, well, why do people use DAI? They use DAI because it's decentralized. Why will people use Intubitc? Because it's decentralized and does not require you to trust in third parties that may disappear or lose or have their BDC seized due to regulatory issues. Now, let's talk about vaults, which are the core of the system. As a vault, if you want to become one, you have a few responsibilities. You put up capital as collateral insurance. This protects others against your misbehavior. You receive custody of BTC, and you need to make sure, of course, that you don't lose that. And when you're requested, you must return the BTC to one or more users. And while you're in the system, you do absorb some of the collateralization risk because your collateral is balanced against the price of BTC. And of course, in case of extreme price fluctuations, there may be liquidations. But essentially, this is what our system tries to prevent. It's a stablecoin-like system, similar to MakerDAO's DAI, that balances the pool of collateral assets against the value of BTC. So these risks are essentially the same as with stablecoins with the difference that you do have this cross-chain aspect where Bitcoin is involved across chains. In return, vaults are paid block rewards in the native governance assets. They earn rewards in kin, uh, into BTC and KBTC, so getting exposure to Bitcoin itself, earn rewards for participating actively in the protocol, liquidating other participants and earning in the different collateral assets, which can be KSM, USDC, um, LKSM, other L1 assets, DAI, and so on. And last but not least, what's happening in, over the next weeks is we're going to integrate liquid staking assets. So you'll be able to stake your KSM or DOT and then use that liquid staking asset as collateral to run a vault, essentially earning in two different protocols, earning staking rewards on Kusama and Polkadot and essentially securing the network and at the same time securing the Intel APDC bridge into this ecosystem and earning rewards here. Now, of course, it is a decentralized network and it is governed by a digital asset, a governance token. Um, on this slide, you see Kint. This is for Kintsugi, but this, it, this is the same case for Intelay. The main purpose of the governance assets are governance. We have a curve-like system. For those of you who are not familiar, this means to participate in governance, you stake your tokens. The longer you stake them, the more voting power you have and the more rewards you will receive from staking. Why is this relevant? It is our vision and view on this that the longer you have a stake in the system, the more voting power you should have. Why? Because this prevents attacks where somebody buys up assets, goes into the system, makes a malicious vote, and then sells the tokens right after the vote passes, avoiding the implications of the negative governance decision. And we've seen this and we've seen big funds and other players do this even with big protocols. And hence, we feel that if somebody participates in governance and they want to have a bigger vote, they have to stick around and they'll have to bear the consequences of whatever decision they make. And this makes our system quite robust. On Kintsugi, we see actually that um, about 50% of the circulating supply is actually already staked. Um, and the average staking duration is 68 weeks. So we can see that a lot of people are actually very actively interested in securing the system. Other utilities are, of course, transaction fees, 
we are adding Kint and we'll be adding Inter as the collateral assets. So this makes it similar to the synthetics token, right? So you can use Inter and Kint as collateral to run the vault. And last but not least, we are introducing and looking to introduce a premium feature set for Inter and Kint stakers. How will this work? Right now, you have certain insurance and liquidation rates. If you stake, you will have access to better insurance policies, better liquidation rates. For example, if you don't stake, your insurance policy might be exactly 100%. If you do stake, you might get an additional buffer, like 5 or 10% on top. That gives you the opportunity to cover any exchange costs if you really use that collateral that you have been reimbursed with to buy BTC. And there's a few of these other intricate parts of the protocol which you can get access to by actively participating in staking. Right, so vault responsibilities. Um, I'll skip over this one, but in short, what you need to do is you need to run a Bitcoin full nodes, but actually we're already working in a light client version. So this will put down the hardware requirements here to essentially a few, mega, a few hundred megabytes and that's it. The vault client that we provide is open source. It's implemented in Rust. It has been audited. You can, of course, use that or run your own. You can do it manually. I would not recommend that. Um, our recommendation right now, because the system is still early, is that you have at least some sysadmin or DevOps um, experience. But your main responsibilities are to make sure that you can configure your server correctly, fulfill redeem requests on time, and maintain collateral levels. Now, for those of you who don't want to do that, who feel that they don't have the technical capacity or time to run the vault themselves, what we're working on is to have vaults as a service. We're working on this validated or delegator model where you have infrastructure providers who allow you to spin up vaults in their, on their servers and you just worry about providing the capital and maintaining the collateral rates. And this will, of course, allow you to spin up a vault within a few clicks and will make this onboarding much easier. So let's quickly talk about the current state. So as of now, we have about 1 million worth of KBTC minted. Um, just today, we, we've seen a huge surge of, of KBTC entering the system. Um, this is backed by $2.3 million worth of KSM collateral, and the system is currently secured by over 40 volts. Given that this is a canary network and very early software, and we launched essentially about three weeks ago, we're quite happy with the progress. We've started increasing the collateral ceilings, allowing more and more collateral to enter the system. Um, and we already have two first integrations. We have a KBTC, WBTC stable pool on SolarBeam. We have a KBTC and AUSD pool on Karura. And obviously, as you can imagine, there's many more coming over the next weeks. And we're working essentially in, in discussions with all major parachains, trying to figure out how we can bring BTC um, to those who really need it as fast as possible. Now, let's take a look at the next collateral assets. Right now, we have KSM as the main collateral asset securing the user's Bitcoin. Why KSM? Because it's the most liquid asset on Kusama. And this is very important for stability and liquidations. Next, we're adding USDC. We're adding this through Moon River's Ethereum bridge. Then we'll have Kint um, that will, and this is a demand that we've seen from vaults that basically allow you to use the Kint tokens also as a collateral asset, um, followed by liquid staking. And then we'll see because their ideas are to add WBDC or other assets and really to try to de-risk and have a uh, the basket of assets as broad as possible. And in the end, it's you who decide. So if you're participating in the network, you have the vote and you can choose whatever asset um, makes most sense. So key dates. We are already live on Kusama. Interlay launch has commenced and we'll expect to see Interlay fully launching with InterBDC and all products, including staking, XCM transfers, and integrations in May, June. Um, and we hope by then to have a simplified way to onboard vaults to make this very easy for even non-technical users. By the end of the year, we're going to add more collateral assets and earning models. Um, our goal is really to connect KBTC, ABTC to all parachains that really want BTC and that have a demand for it, and to really start our expansion to Ethereum and Cosmos. And Last but not least, um, I'll give a very brief sneak peek of what's coming next. I know I'm already quite short on time, so I'll keep this short. But essentially, we are working to construct vaults as decentralized BTC banks. What does this mean? Right now, vaults have Bitcoin on the Bitcoin chain locked and they have collateral locked in Polkadot, and that's not being used. 
But of course, it would make sense to use that, these, this, these assets and allow vaults to borrow and trade these assets within our system. And we found a way how to do this. Um, and basically, I'll, rec I'll I recommend you to check out our blogs and see what's coming next. But the idea is that each of these vaults becomes a small prime brokerage, a small decentralized bank, which can use the assets that they provide as collateral or the BDC they receive from users for borrowing and lending and further increase their utility. And last but not least, a very small short sneak peek of a new protocol that we recently released. Into BDC is the most secure way to bridge Bitcoin into DeFi today. However, it is still custodial. It is decentralized custody, it is insured, it's the best you can get. But our vision was always to make it non-custodial. Make sure that BDC cannot be stolen. Even if it's insured, make sure that nobody can ever steal and access a user's Bitcoin. And with the new XCC protocol that we released recently, um, in fact, two, uh, I think two and a half, three weeks ago at Bitcoin Miami, um, we made a major step in this direction. How does it work? Without going into details, we combine commit chains. Yes, it's the stuff that Ethereum at layer two protocols use um, with some Bitcoin strip magic. And you can check out the Cointelegraph article there. And also it links to the paper that we've released. Um, the goal is to have this ready um, by the end of the year and ship it together with the first integration, either of libraries or wallets that allow you to earn BDC directly from the wallet without losing custody. And with this, thanks for your attention. Please consider joining the network and help us bring Bitcoin and long-term other assets into the Polkadot and other ecosystems. And thanks so much for your attention.